page six now, the comeback hit in the Middle East. While the world struggles to find victory over the coronavirus, Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has found victory with the Israeli Supreme Court. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. How does this election victory affect Israel and the rest of the world? Well, you have Israeli history being made. Um, Bibi Netanyahu, as he's called by his friends and foes alike, his name is Benjamin, is now the longest serving prime minister in Israeli history and has pulled off the coup that everyone <laughs> said was impossible, which is a coalition with his chief rival. Ironically, Benny Gantz, former head of the Israeli Defense Forces, a very famous general, and Benjamin Netanyahu, whose, whose background was uh, a famous commando in the uh, highly trained secretive Sayeret Matkal are going to share prime ministership. And what does that mean for policy? Well, they are going to annex a number of towns uh, in Judea and Samaria, the ancient home of the Jewish people for 3,000 years, and it's going to be done with American approval. Uh, they are going to keep Jerusalem united uh, as the capital of the Jewish people. And most importantly, uh, Bibi's long history of trying to create a relationship with the moderate Sunni states, specifically Saudi Arabia as the leader, will probably continue. And don't be shocked if someday Saudi Arabia recognizes Israel as a nation state in the Middle East. That would be an incredible feat for Bibi to accomplish. That is quite a prediction. So I hear that you have been spending some time on this topic and interviewed an Israeli Air Force general. What can you tell me about that? Well, I can't get too specific, although a series of interviews was just completed and they'll be up on our American Truth website within a day or so. I can tell you that the general told me uh, unofficially that Israel is pounding Hezbollah targets in Syria almost relentlessly. Uh, Hezbollah, as many uh, viewers know, is the proxy army of Iran. It is funded by, trained by, supplied by, and often led by Iran. And Bibi has drawn a line in the sand in Syria against Iran, meaning if you bring your troops into Syria and threaten us on a daily basis, we will take those positions out. And that's what's been happening, as I said, unofficially. You almost daily hear about a bombing raid, either by jets, helicopters, missiles, uh, or tanks, long-range artillery, taking out munitions, supply depots, and lately, actually, Iranian-led troops. So, it will continue until Iran pulls out of Syria. And what do you see happening? Do, do you see that happening? I guess, what's your prediction with you laid out a lot of very interesting facts and how do we how do we process that what do you see coming well iran has made no secret that their mission in life is to destroy the jewish state and kill all the jews it's not a secret they say it almost daily in press releases they do it in parades they post it on websites and they sing songs about it so it's not a secret you know Bibi is one of those people who believes if someone says they're going to kill you believe them there is uh, a common theme in the uh, Israeli military that either those troops are pushed back out of Syria or they will come across the border. And what Israel is most concerned about, quite frankly, is the stockpile of over 130,000 missiles and rockets that are stationed in residential homes throughout the southern areas on the border, uh, the northern border of Israel. And what that will accomplish if those missiles are not destroyed is one day somebody pushes a trigger and there's too many missiles and rockets in the air for Israel to defend against with Iron Dome. That's what they're afraid of, and that's why they are relentlessly pursuing these munition stockpiles. Eventually, Iran will have to pull back because, quite frankly, they're broke, the economy is in tatters, and the people in Iran are protesting in the streets, not just about coronavirus, but the corruption of their own government. They've had it. They want to be free, and they want to be getting along with the rest of the Middle East. I hope it happens. Right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.